Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Well, let's see. Twelve o'clock. Okay. So let's pray. Father, we come to you now in the gracious and mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your word. Because your word is alive and health to all our flesh. And as we come to you now, we come with a heart of thanksgiving. Thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity to come and enter into your presence. We bless you, Father. Hallelujah. Father, I ask you that you would anoint every ear to hear, prepare every heart to receive. Make my tongue as of a pen of a ready writer to write your word upon the hearts and upon the mind of your people, that they will know the truth and that the truth shall make them free. And Father, we covenant with you to give you glory, honor, and praise for whatever you do in the hearts and in the lives of your people. We'll give you all the glory and all the honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, glory to God. How are you all doing today? Amen. Well, this tonight, this morning, it's a good day. And we are here to thank God for what he has done and is doing. Amen. See, all things are possible to him that believe. Are you a believer today? Are you a believer? I believe that you are. And that you bring, you know, I've noticed, I've noticed, you know what I've noticed? The people that listen to my messages on a regular basis, their health, especially those that were believing for, for healing, their health is increasing. It's getting better. You know why? Because of the presence of God, the anointing. Amen. Everybody, they're getting better and better. And it just and it, it and it's all about the goodness of the Lord. It's nothing about me. I give God all the glory for that. Amen. I give God the glory for that because He is the one that that deserves it. Not me, not you, but Him. And that right there. That's right. I know. Hallelujah. Faith comes. By hearing and hearing by the word of God. If we're going to receive the promises of God, if we're going to receive the word of God active in our life, manifested in our lives, faith is important because faith cometh by hearing. Romans 10, 17. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. See, preparing yourself to walk by faith and not by sight is a powerful tool because God's word is alive and health and healing to all your flesh. Amen. So faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. To increase your faith, to increase to increase your own faith, study everything in the Bible on healing. If you want to increase your faith on uh, in this area, Study everything that you can find in the Bible connected to healing. Amen. Just study it and and prayerfully, prayerfully uh, 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 meditate upon it, because those scriptures pertaining to healing will benefit you and will cause your health to turn around. Amen. Why? Because you 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 feeding your spirit what your body need. Your 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 spirit need to. Read. You need to read the word so you can strengthen your spirit in this area. Amen. You see, if you want the word of God to be, you want the word of God to become possible for you, then you got to 
do the, the, that which is possible for you to do. That is to read and to meditate and, 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 and just study along the lines of divine health and healing. You know, when I first started getting, when I first started getting this message, that's what I did. I read, I, I, I wrote down every scripture pertaining to health and healing. I didn't have a computer at that time. I mean, that's, that's back in the stone age. <laughs> I didn't have no computer back in the stone age. Amen. All I had was a notebook and, notebook and pencil, notebook and pen. Amen. And I wrote, I went in the back of my book at the Concordians. I went in the back of my books and I looked up everything pertaining to health and healing. Amen. And I wrote down those scriptures on health and healing. And I, and I began to study and I began to read them. I began to meditate upon them. I began to allow those words to get in my spirit. See, I got I had to come to the point that I would have to that I that I could believe the word of God. And for that to happen, I had to get in the word. Glory to God. How you doing, Jordan? Glory to God. I had to get into the word because God word is 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 the key to our deliverance. It's the key to our healing. It's the key to our freedom. Because he that the son set free is free indeed. See, when we when we through faith accept what God has said, our faith is increasing. Amen. Notice what he said in, in, in the book of uh in the book of Mark. No, not Mark, uh in the book of Luke, chapter 17. I'm gonna I'm gonna go there right now. Book of Luke, chapter 17. Amen. Glory to God. Let's go to the book of Luke chapter 17. And then look at verse number. There we go. Look at verse number. Verse number five. Verse number five. And it says. And the disciples said unto him, said unto the Lord, increase our faith. Increase our faith. Amen. And the Lord said, and the Lord said, if ye have faith. <laughs> and they said, Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if ye have faith. <laughs> See, he, he, he coming back with a question. If ye have faith. Amen. As a grain of mustard seed. In other words, if you just had a little bit of faith, you don't need a whole lot. If you just had a little bit of faith. Amen. Just a little bit. Oh, glory to God. You could, what he said, you, you, if you had just a little bit of faith, amen, as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycamine tree, amen, you might say to this sycamine tree, glory to God, be thou, be thou plucked up by the root and be thou planted in the sea and it should obey you. Now, what is it obeying? Is it obeying you as a person or is it obeying the word of God? Folks, it's obeying the word of God. That's right. It's obeying the word of God because the word of God is what we need to increase our faith so that the things that is impossible will become possible because God has made all things possible for us. Amen. Through his word. Amen. So a lack of faith hinders you from receiving your healing. <clears throat> I'm going to say it again. A lack of faith will stop you from receiving your healing. Amen. Yeah, we, we and let me just say this uh, right now because I'm, I'm preparing. We, we, are, we are praying, my wife and I, we are praying about coming, going back to Alabama right now. But we uh, we try to we pray and ask God for the timing that uh, that we could go back and and uh, take this healing message to Alabama once again. We are believing God for that time, Amen. For that appointed time, because you see, He placed it in my spirit, and now we're starting to pray about that. We're starting to intercede about that because we want to know the the we want the right timing because we know when we go. When the, when, the, when the Lord hand is upon us, we know that we will have a great success. And so we want you, we want you guys to pray with, to pray with us also. <clears throat> pray with us and for us as we prepare 
our spirit to go to Alabama once again to share this message of faith. God bless you. Thank you for that thumbs up. I like that. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> because the next, you never know, he might be sending me to your area. Amen. I only go where he sent me, and I and I and I preach what he tell me. I don't because I, I don't. I, I have to because see, I, I I can't answer to man. I have to answer to God. I go what he go, tell me to go, and I preach what he tell me to preach. Amen. So, y'all be praying for us. Amen. And also, we it is uh it is God. Amen. Faith is believing God will heal. Faith is believing that God will do what he said he would do in his word. Amen. Faith is believing that God will heal. God will heal who? Not just can heal, but will heal. Amen. God loves you so much that he will ex extend his compassion he will reach out to you with the hand of, 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 of compassion and he will minister to you the miracle healing power. I'm telling you, God wants, God wants to show himself strong on your behalf. Healing faith is not something that we just happen to walk upon. We have to study the word of God and get the scripture in our heart. This is why when you go to these type of meetings where there's a lot of, or when they're preaching and teaching along this line, prepare your heart before you go. Be determined that you're not going to walk away empty. Amen. So how are you going to prepare your heart? You're going to prepare your heart by, by, by med meditating on the healing scriptures even before you go to one of these meetings. Amen. You're going to go with a predetermined a heart that you're not going to leave without your breakthrough, without your miracle, without your touch. Amen. Because God doesn't want you to leave without. He wants you to leave with a testimony. He wants you to leave knowing that all things work together for good to them that love him. Amen. Because he, he, you know he loves you and I know that you love him. And he wants you to have that testimony. He wants you to, he wants you to be able to share that testimony with your friends are loved ones. Amen. Glory to God. And so now we know faith. God wants to increase our, in, increase our faith. And he says right here in the book of, uh, let's back up. Look at Mark, Mr. Luke chapter 17. Once again, let's back up to verse number four, verse number four. He said, if, if he trespassed against the seven times in a day, and seven times in a day, turn again and unto thee, turn again to thee, saying, "I repent." Thou shalt forgive him. Amen. And then now that's a lot of that's a lot of forgiveness that he's talking about right here. Amen. But notice what he said in verse number five, because the, the apostles knew that if someone just going to keep coming doing the same thing over and over and over, and they and they keep acting, I, I, I'm sorry, please forgive me. That's going to get. That's going to be redundant, and it's going to it's going to be it's going to begin to get on your nerve. So God knew that that you going in order for you to forgive someone like that, you're going to have it's got to be a, it's got to be by the Spirit of God. It's got to be a supernatural act of the sovereign will of God for you to forgive someone so many times, Amen. For doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over, Amen. So God showed us right here in the Word. Because the disciples said, how many, uh, seven times, seven times, or seven, he said 70 times, seven, amen. But look what he said. And he said, and, and Jesus, and the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if thou, if ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, amen. And it should obey you. See, it's not obeying you as a human being, it's obeying the word of God. It's obeying the faith of God that you are releasing out of your heart. Your words are very powerful. God is waiting on your words to line up with his will. And his will is his word. Amen. And he's waiting for you to come in alignment with what he's already said. Amen. So that his will will be established in your heart and in your circumstances. Amen. 
Glory to God. And so now he says in verse number seven, he said, but which of you having a, having a, a servant plowing or a feeding cattle will say unto him by and by when, when he is come from the field, go and sit down to me and will not rather, and will not rather say unto him, make ready wherewith I may sup and gird thyself, no say gird thyself and serve me. See, because he's his servant, he's expecting his servant, not only do the servant come out of field, just coming out from working, he said, but go and pre prepare yourself and come back and serve me. Come and serve me. Amen. Glory to God. And he said, till I, am, till I have eaten and drinking and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. In other words, he's, he's, still, he's still reflecting on faith because you see, faith is the way he's explaining this is a servant. Faith is not just something that we have. Faith is a servant. When you understand how faith works, faith begin, it, it begins to operate as a servant. Amen? Amen? Because when you learn how to operate that faith, you can speak. Amen? Because you see, life and death is in the power of the tongue. You can speak. And what you say shall come to pass. Therefore, I say to you, what things will you desire when you pray? Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. See, all things are possible to him that believe. Amen. All things are possible to him that believe. So God wants you to not just to, not just to think about it. He wants you to begin to, he wants you to begin to speak. He wants you to begin to declare. He wants you to begin to open up your mouth and saying what he wants. He wants you to say what you want. He wants you to say what you want. Amen. And what you want has to line up with the will of God. With the will of God. Amen. So now, your own, your, your faith is absolute necessary. Your faith is absolutely necessary for the promises of God to be activated in your life. Your faith is necessary, absolutely, for the will of God and the promise of God to be activated in your life. Otherwise, you 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 just walking, you just talking loud and saying nothing. Amen. You talking loud and saying nothing. So if that's why it's so important that we hear what God said in His Word. That's why I told you from the beginning, like I did, do like I did, just do it. What do you got to lose? You ain't got nothing to lose, especially if you believe in God for you for healing. You ain't got nothing to lose but everything to gain. Amen. You may, and all you got to do is write down those scriptures. Write down those scriptures. Look in the back of your Bible in the concordance and look at the health and healing. Everything pertaining to health and healing and write them down. Just write them down. Because you're going to experience every word of the scripture when you write them down. You copy and paste. You, you can read them, but your, your spirit will pick it up even faster when you're writing them down. Because you, you have to... You have to read every word when you're writing them down. Amen. Every word will will, 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 will go through your mind and, and through your spirit. Amen. While you're writing. Then all of us, then when you get done writing, just begin to, then you, you go back and just start reading what you have wrote. Reading what you have wrote. And reading and reading and reading and reading, and reading again. Again and again and again. And then sit back and then just think about what you just read. Amen. God, you said you sent your word. You bore my, and you and you said you sent your word, and you del, and you he, delivered us, and you healed us. Glory to God! For, you delivered us from our destruction. You healed us, and delivered us from our destruction. Amen. Just start meditating upon that word. Allow the word to go beyond your thinking, and let it drop into your spirit. And then, after you done sit there and you meditate upon that word for for a little while, then all of a sudden you get, just go back and read it again. Now, go back and read it again. Let that. Just, just begin to let that word pile up in your spirit, so that when the enemy comes against you, you know I was lying. Yeah, I was, I was, I was uh, just, just minding my own business, and the, and the enemy came against me. Then when the enemy came against me, I, I, it, and it come by surprise. I wasn't expecting. Then all of a sudden, right out of my spirit, my, the word of God came forth and spoke to that situation. See, when you meditate upon the word of God. When you allow the word of God to go into your spirit, amen, when circumstances 
arise, when situations occur that, that come to take you by surprise, before you even realize it, the word of God is coming up out of your spirit. Why? Because you have put it in your spirit. And all of a sudden, that word is coming up out of your spirit and, and taking a stand against that what is coming against you. God has showed us time and time again how powerful the word is. But it will not do us any good unless we uh, digest it, get it in our spirit, meditate upon it, and declare what God has said over and over and over until it becomes natural to you. Once the word of God become become natural to, to hear it, rehearse over and over and over, all of a sudden, the Bible says in John chapter 1, verse number 14, and the word became flesh. The word is going to come alive, and all of a sudden, it's going to begin to illuminate your on the inside, your inward parts. Amen. Once the word begins to illuminate your inward parts, it's going to cause you, it's going to cause you to begin to experience, oh my God, you, you, you that's when God's healing. That's when the healing power, uh, the, the healing of the word, the life of the word began to attack the darkness that have attached itself to your body. What I mean by that darkness have attached itself, I'm talking about that sickness, that disease, that, 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 that infirmity. Amen. That, that's, I call that darkness because it's not coming from God. It is coming from the enemy. Amen. And when you, as an individual, begin to meditate upon that word, begin to allow that word to go from your mind into your spirit, and all of a sudden, that word began to take on life. That word began to come alive, and all of a sudden, that word began to, that word began to uh, 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 address the issues that your body is experiencing. Now, folks, that sounds far-fetched, but let me tell you something. I've I've lived what I'm ter- I, I've lived this. I live this what I'm sharing with you. I live it daily. Amen. I live it daily. Glory to God. Amen. And you can you can live it daily also. And and for you know it, and you know, you might you might think that, well, I bet I prayed that and I prayed and I prayed and I hadn't gotten my healing yet. Well, put some faith with your prayers. Put some faith with your prayers. What do you mean? What do you mean by what I mean by putting faith with your prayers? Put some word. With your prayers. Amen. Don't just go there and say, well, Lord, I'm asking you to heal me. I'm in so much pain and I don't know. I don't have no money to go to the doctor. Lord, I'm just asking you to just heal me. You know, that ain't faith. Faith is saying, God, you declared in your word that you bore my sickness. You carried my diseases. Hallelujah, God. And, and you said, and by your stripes, I am healed. You bore my sins in your own body on a tree. And by whose stripes I am here. God, you said it in your word. You said, Lord God, that in the name of Jesus, you said that you sent your word and you healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Amen. Glory to God. What I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm rehearsing those scriptures that I've allowed to drop in my spirit. I'm rehearsing those scriptures. Why? Because I want those scriptures to, to, to cause my, to, to be, I want those scriptures to begin to come alive on the inside of me to begin to push out that spirit of infirmity, that sickness and disease, that word of God must come alive on the inside of you. Amen. It must come alive on the inside of you. Amen. The faith by which you are saved is the same way. It come the same way for your healing by confessing with your mouth and believing with your heart by confessing with your mouth and believing with your heart. Amen. Remember what the Bible says in Mark chapter 11, verse number 22 and Jesus in Mark chapter 11, verse number 22 it says, and Jesus answered and said unto them, have faith in God. Jesus answered and said unto them, who's he talking to? He talking to the disciples, those that was following his ministry, those that have opened, those, those that, that he had uh, uh, called out of the, 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 the professionals and to follow him. God wants you to come to that place where you will experience the goodness of the Lord, and it's not going to be by it's not going to be by an happenstance. It's not going to be an accident. It's not going to be a coincidence. It's going to be on purpose. It's got to be on purpose. Amen. God wants you to come and experience His marvelous, wonderful grace, because His grace is sufficient for us. Hallelujah. His grace is sufficient for us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
Amen. So, so uh, through Jesus, through Jesus, healing can manifest in your body. Believing the word that Jesus spoke over and over again will cause you to experience God's divine health and healing in your in your body. Amen. In your life. Okay. Now, next one. Uh, uh, the faith of our fathers. The faith of our fathers. Who's our fathers? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Amen. Abraham, Isaac. God has given us the ability to believe even as they had believed. Amen. Even as they had believed. Remember he said in Hebrew chapter 11, verse number 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Remember Abram, when God called him to leave his father's house and to go to a place, that he, uh, go to a land that he never knew. He never saw the land, but he took a step of faith and he followed the instructions that God gave him. Amen. He followed the instructions that God gave him. Amen. And God took him away from his father's house into, now, 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 now notice folks, Abraham, he followed God faithfully. He, and, and, and I can imagine him at home with his father and they got everything going for him. And all of a sudden, God gets his attention and said, Abraham, I want you to go to a land that I will show you of. Amen. And, and all of a sudden, he go to his father and said, Father, look, I, I don't know what's going on. I just... I just got uh, a message from Jehovah, God. And he's telling me, he's calling me out. And, and uh, Father, I want, your, I want your blessing to go. And you see, whether he got his blessing or not, he, has to, he, he was going to obey God. He was obeying God. Amen. So we, when we are in a, a tight place, God wants to cause you to experience the peace that surpasses all understanding. He, in other words, he wants you to trust him with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. God wants you to take that step of faith, not, not, not paying attention to your surrounding. Just like Abraham, he took that step of faith and he went, I mean, he went and his, his, his people began to, I mean, they began to get discouraged. They began to, to, to doubt, amen, because they were running out of food and stuff. They needed water and everything. God began to show up on their behalf. God wants to show up on your behalf, amen, because he is the same yesterday, today, forever. He wants to show up on your behalf. Faith is your own. Faith is your own tool God has given you to access the promises of heaven, of God. Amen. Faith is the tool that God has given you to access the promises that he has given in his word. Amen. Faith of one, faith is can be strengthened when we are talking to the Father, communing with the Father, praying with the Father, uh, establishing our relationship, uh, strengthening our relationship with the Father through prayer, through the Word. God can make all things possible. Are you ready to see what God can do for you? Amen. I know what He can do for you. For, for faith for healing comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. Relating experience, you know, talk about some of the experience that you've already gone through and how he, how he brought you out. Amen. Refocus your attention on the good things of life. When you didn't know which way to turn, when you was in so much pain and no way to and no way to turn. And all of a sudden, you begin to pray. You begin to cry out to God. 
But you're not just crying out to God. You're not just praying. You are releasing your faith. And all of a sudden, it's not just words that's coming out of your mouth. It's faith coming out of your, out of your mouth, out of your heart and out of your mouth. And all of a sudden, God perks up. He perks up because he, he finally hear you rehearsing his word back into his ears. And now he's is acting on the word that he have received from you. Because he said he will confirm his word with signs following. Mark chapter 16, verse 20. The Lord went with them, working with them, confirming the word with signs following. And in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse number 13, I think, he hastened to perform his word. He hastened to perform the word. God will not allow his word to fall to the ground, according to Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. God would not allow his word to fall to the ground. But it will accomplish those things that pleases him. Amen. But he expects us to believe. He expects us to believe because all things are possible to him that believe. When you are sick, believe God wants to heal you. When you, I'm going to say it again, when you are sick, just simply believe that God wants to heal you and begin to read the scripture, begin to go over the scripture, begin to study the scripture. Amen. Even if you already can quote the scriptures, still get the Bible, start reading the scripture, start quoting the scripture, start allowing, start, start uh, 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 watering your spirit with the written word of God. Amen. And let the word of God begin to minister to you. Don't let people tell you that God doesn't, that God don't heal no more. Ah, my God, don't listen to that garbage. Amen. When someone, when you, and, and don't let, don't let no one talk you out of your healing. Don't let people tell you that, oh, you just, why you, you what you're that wasting your time. You know, God don't heal no more. Don't let people talk to you that way. When people try to talk to you that way, that is not, that, that's the devil talking to you. Why? Because he wants to defeat you. And he'll use your, the people that you have utmost respect for to speak over you words of fear, words of doubt, words of unbelief to stop you from receiving the promise of God in your life. God wants to heal you. Amen. God wants to heal you. So you need to accept that. You need to accept it. To experience it, you have to accept it by faith. Accept it by faith and, uh, and, and just yield. <clears throat> and just yield. You can lay up in your hospital bed all you want to. If that's what you want to do, just go ahead on to the hospital. Just lay up in the bed and let them doctors uh, just go ahead and, and, and experiment on you. <laughs> just go ahead on. If you don't... If you don't like if you don't like this type of message, just go into the hospital. <laughs> go into the hospital and let the doctors experiment on you. And if you make it out alive, you be one of you be one out of you be one of a you you be you be one of the few. <laughs> Amen. Especially if you if you're over sixty year old, you're over fifty, sixty year old, if you be you want to go there and let them poke around on you and you just go ahead on. Go ahead on. It'll be, you'll be fine. <laughs> Amen. But I want you to know that God, he sees you right where you are. And if you can just simply believe God, accept what God has said in his word, believe what God has said in the word, and begin to speak the word of God over your life daily, rehearsing the word of God over your life. I'm telling you, write the scriptures down pertaining to health and healing. Write them down and start reading them over and over and over and over. Let them get into your spirit. Amen. Let them get into your spirit. And then all of a sudden, your body is going to start healing itself. Why? Because you're putting the right thing in your spirit that's going to work, that's going to go to work on your body. Amen. Because that's what you need. The word to go to work on your body. 
Ain't that right, Batman? <laughs> yes. Glory to God. Look at that. Danny's here? Yeah. Amen. But God wants to touch you. God wants to deliver you. God wants to heal you. God wants to set you free. God wants to set you free. Amen. He wants to set you free. I got to find something here now because... <clears throat> Glory to God. In Mark chapter 9, let's go there. Mark chapter 9. Look at verse number 23. Now let's start, let's start, let's start, let's start on another scripture. Let's start. Mark chapter 9. Look at verse number. Oh, cool shake. Look at verse number 17. Mark chapter 9, verse number 17. And it says. And one, of the, and one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which had a dumb spirit. And whithersoever he taketh him, and he teareth him, and he, and he formeth, and gasheth with his teeth, and panted away. And I spake to thy disciples that they could cast him out. And he said, and they could not. And they could not. You see, if you don't meditate on the word, if you don't allow, if you don't believe the word of God, you're gonna, you're not gonna be able to to bring about that. Uh, you you won't be able to act, uh, tap into that anointing just because you are, just because you are, just because you are a human being. You gotta be, you gotta, you gotta tap into that anointing by meditating, by studying the word of God. And a lot of work, a lot. You got to, that relationship has to be has to be established. Notice what it says right here, verse number, verse number twenty now. And they brought unto they brought him unto that unto. He said he said and and they and they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, he straightway, glory to God. Can you see what I'm saying? Verse number twenty. Let's let's go back to verse number nineteen. And answered and and answered him and said. O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with thee? Be with you? How long shall I suffer you? He said, "Bring him to me." This is Jesus talking. He said, "Bring him to me." Amen. Now notice what he said, verse number twenty. And they brought him to him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him and fell and fall on the ground and wallow it, foaming. And he asked his father, "How long is it ago since it this came?" unto him and he said of a child of a child amen of a child glory to God hallelujah see the devil tries to take advantage of children and that's why that's why parents has to be equipped with this word of God with the scripture of God so that when the enemy comes against him against their children that they will be able to act on the word of God and in faith. Act on the word of God in faith. Why? Because faith will cause that child that the enemy is, 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 is trying to interfere with his, with his growth, with his childhood. You as a parent have authority over that devil. And if you don't uh, do something about that, that devil is going to, is going to uh, take advantage of your child. Amen. Gonna, that's what he did with this man right here in the Bible. Amen. Now notice what he said, verse number 21. Mark chapter 9, verse number 21. And he asked, and he asked his father, how long ago? He said, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. Of a child. Amen. So in other words, the child, he couldn't defend himself. If the parents don't prepare themselves to defend the children, the devil it's working overtime to try to manipulate the children to trust them. Amen. So we have to be on guard at all times. Now notice it's at verse number 22. And often it, it had cast him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, he said, have compassion on us 
and help us. This man, he's desperate. He's desperate. He needs help. Amen. How many of you are desperate and needing help right now, even in your own health, even in your own body? You need help right now. Are you desperate enough to, 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 to come to the Lord and ask him like this man? He brought him to his disciples, but the disciples could not do it. Amen. So he, so he said, bring him to me. He kind of gave them a mild rebuke. How long do I have to suffer you? How long will I be with you? He said, bring the child to me. And they brought the child to him. And soon as the child came into the presence of the Lord, the devil threw the boy down on the floor and began to wallow, began to foam with the mouth and gash with the teeth. And Jesus didn't do nothing at that point. He talked to the, he started talking to the father. He said, how long ago has this, did this come upon him? He said, and the father said, of a child. Amen. Of a child. Glory to God. So now, so now in verse number, verse number, verse number 24, he said, and straightway the father, uh, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Oh, see, what made him to come back with that word that was spoken out of his mouth? Look at verse number 23. Let's read it now. That was verse number 24. Let's go back up to verse number 23. Because in verse number 22, he said, Lord, have compassion on us and help us. Verse number 23 said, And Jesus answered, it, Jesus answered him, If thou canst believe. See, no matter how difficult your situation may be, no matter how hard the problem seems to, to be, amen, the Bible says right here in verse number 23, Jesus answered and said, Jesus answered him, if thou can't, canst believe, if thou can't believe, he said, all things are possible to him that believe. It doesn't matter what kind of sickness that you're experiencing. Remember, it didn't come from God. And that's why you have to get the word. You have to meditate. Do like I did. I'm, I'm going to tell you one more time. Do like I did when I was sick. I wrote down every scripture that pertain to health and healing. Amen. And it was like two or three pages. I wrote them all down. Amen. And, and, and every day I was reading some of those scriptures. Every day reading some of those scriptures. Amen. And then all of a sudden, one day I was lying in my bed hurting, crying. I mean, I was hurting so bad and I was, and I was crying. I, st I, I started crying and I started going, oh God, I need help. I need help. God spoke to me. He said, get up and read your Bible. And, and and I'm thinking, who is this? <laughs> I'm thinking, who is this? I get up and look out at the door, make sure there wasn't nobody to mess with me. And I, as I look out the door, I didn't see no one mess with me. Amen. And so I went back and I and I got my my Bible, my Bibles. I I, I didn't have a desk at that time. I had an ironing board. I used that as a desk. I got my ironing board. I put I picked it up and 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 and, and laid it down enough where I can sit there with a chair. Amen. And, and, uh, <laughs> hey, glory to God. I see you out there, brother John. I see you. Amen. And, uh, amen. And so now I set all, I set my, all my Bibles across my ironing board and I'm beginning to, uh, uh, read. I started reading the Bible, started reading the Bible because God spoke to me. Amen. And I thought that, I thought that someone was messing with me. So I went to the door and looked outside and I didn't see no one mess. I didn't see no one outside. So I came back and I sat down and started reading the word. Cause I, cause the devil ain't going to tell you to read no Bible. Amen. I, I realized that. And I, and so I've got my Bible, started reading it. Amen. I got my Bible, started reading. And I, and I wind up in Mark chapter 11 verse in Mark chapter 16. Can we just go there right now? Mark chapter 16. Amen. And I read the whole chapter and I got down to verse number 15. I came down to verse number 15, and, and this is this was right when I was just called to preach. Amen. Right when I was just called to preach. Amen. And I was so sick. My body was in so much pain. I had messed up my body, the lifestyle that I was living as a young man growing up. I didn't know nothing. I didn't never think that I was gonna be a preacher. Never thought that, never think that I would be qualified to be a preacher. Amen. Never thought that that God would even want me to be a preacher, the lifestyle that I was living. But look what God did. And I'm and, 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 the, and my family said, oh, give, just give him a week. He'll be back. 
Hey man, then that week them coming on here, then they 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 still drinking and having their party and everything. Oh, just just leave Larry alone. Just give him another month. You be you you watch me. He gonna he gonna be right back doing the same thing that he was doing at first. And here it is going on now since nineteen what that nineteen eighty seven eight eighty nineteen eighty six, and here it is now nineteen is it here it is now two thousand and what two thousand nineteen. Glory to God, and I'm still going. Hey Amen. I'm still going. I'm telling you, folks, God can hold you. God can sustain you. God can heal you. God can make you free if you just believe. If you just believe. Amen. Amen. So now in, in, in Mark chapter 16, I, was, I just was called to preach. Didn't know, didn't really know nothing about the Bible. Amen. But I was, I was listening to these preachers on, on television talking about faith and so on and so on. And this is back when Catherine Kuhlman was, was still around. I could see, I saw her on television every once in a while. Amen. And then I uh, started listening to them faith message by Kenneth Hagin. Amen. And then uh, uh, Robert Tilton, he was, I'm talking about these, all these faith men that was, that was back there during that time. Amen. And now, and, and now I'm looking at, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, Lord, how come these people how they talk about all this stuff? Kenneth Hagen, he was a healing preacher. He talked about it all the time. Matter of fact, that's what that's where I learned it from. Glory to God. And I started studying the Bible. I started studying for myself. And now, glory to God. I don't need to. I, I, I can preach my own message now. Amen. But notice what he said, verse number 15. He said, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and the baptized shall be saved. And he that believeth not shall be damned. Amen. Now I'm looking at myself. I said, God, I'm a believer. Now look at verse number 17. He said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. And that's when I started saying, well, God, I read, I saw that. I said, huh? I said, huh? Let me read that again. And I read it again. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. And all of a sudden, these words started jumping off the page, started jumping off the page. And, and, I'm, and, and every time it jumped, I'll read it again. I'll read it again. And, and, and then and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it then went beyond my carnal thinking. Amen. I was not just receiving the sincere milk of the word any longer. Now I'm beginning to receive the meat of the word. The meat of the word. The meat of the word. God began to minister to me the meat of the word. And all of a sudden, the word began to come alive. It began to come alive. Oh my God. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm getting excited over here. Glory to God. Amen. Verse number 17 was again. <laughs> and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. And then, you know, because I was always told that uh, about the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. And I started questioning God. I said, God, I don't see you talking about the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher here. Amen. And, and, and then he said, read it again. And he said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. He said, read it again. He said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Then I said, wow. He's not talking specifically to the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. He's talking to the average man or woman that will simply believe. That will simply believe. Amen. That's why he said in Mark chapter 9, verse number 23, all things are possible to him that believe. Now I now I understand what he's saying here. Amen. And so he said, These signs shall follow them that believe what? In my name. In my name. Shall they do what? Cast out devil. You see, sickness and disease is not something that God uh, introduced us to. The devil introduced us to this sickness and disease. Why? Because Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden. Amen. Because Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden, and he introduced the he, he introduced the God's followers, he introduced man to uh, a curse. Amen. And remember when Jesus was in when Jesus went to Pontius Pilate's courtyard, they beat him. Amen. His 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 the straps went across his back was for our healing. Remember, no, now notice this: they put a crown of thorn upon his head. Amen. What did the crown of thorn represent? The crown of thorns represent the curse of the law. Amen. The thorns represented the curse of the law. So 
not only did they beat him for our healing, that he took the curse and they put it upon him. Amen. And glory to God. And when he went to the cross, they took he took the curse to the cross with him, still on his head. Amen. Because remember, he told Adam, he must he told he told Adam, uh uh the earth will not produce, must the earth will produce thorns, thistles, and thorns, amen. Amen. Why? Because because you disobeyed me. So the earth be, was cursed because and Jesus took that curse upon him. Sickness and diseases is part of the curse that Jesus took on him. Whoo, glory to God. My God. And when we can see that, when we can understand that, we can take what Jesus has did for us and if we can accept that, my friend, you are on your way up. You're on your way up. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And everything that the devil has meant for evil concerning you, God said, this too shall come to pass. Mm, 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 mm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So it says right here in verse number 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Now notice that in my name shall they do what? Cast out devils. See, you have been given power to cast out devils. As a believer, you have the power. You are a powerful being, whether you know it or not. Amen. Just think how powerful men are without God in their hearts, in their life. See what man can accomplish without God in their, in their life? How much, you, how much more can we accomplish with God in our lives? Hallelujah. So you are a powerful human being and you don't even realize it. Your voice, your voice has power greater than anything that you can imagine. You just got to learn how to channel it the right way. Amen. You have the power of life and death in your mouth. Amen. You have the power to bless or curse in your mouth. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God wants you to see yourself walking free from the curse of the law. Sickness and disease is not for you. You have been given the everything that you need to walk in divine health. The curse, Jesus bore it on the cross. It is not yours. And for you to continue to accept it, it's that's that's showing me that 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 you don't really know who you are. Amen. You are a child of the most high God. You've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Jesus was made a curse for us, for it is written, curses everyone that hang it on the tree. What did Jesus hang on? They put him up on a cross. What is what a cross made of? It was made of a tree. And he had the thorn, the thorns, amen, that, that they had planted together and put it upon his head. What did the thorn represent? The thorn represent the curse of the ground. Glory to God. Mm. Hallelujah. So now in verse number 18, it says, verse number 18, it says, glory to God. And they shall take up serpent if they drink any dead of things. See, first, remember, You've been, you've been given power over all the powers of the devil. Amen. Now he's saying, because, because, because you've been given the power, he said, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. What are these serpents? That serpent is something deadly. It is something deadly. Amen. Glory to God. They shall take up serpent. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And I like this part. They shall lay hands. Who are they? They shall lay hands on the sick. Who are they? He's talking to the believer. He said, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Again, he's talking to the believer. He's not talking to the apostle, prophet, brand, the pastor, teacher, although he is, but he's not talking directly to them. He's talking to whosoever believe it. He's talking to whosoever believe it. Even apostle, prophet, brand, the teacher has to come this route in order to receive the touch from heaven. They have to come through the same route. They have to believe the gospel. They have to believe it. They have to believe it. Amen. I don't care if you've been preaching 40, 50 years. You still got to believe it. Well, I've been preaching this longer than you, and you. I don't have to believe nothing you, you say. You don't have to believe what I say, but you have to believe what the Word of God says. 
you don't have to believe nothing I say, but you have to believe what the Word of God says. Because the Word of God has the ability to deliver you, has the ability to heal you, has the ability to set you free. All things are possible when you believe. All things are possible when you believe. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are you ready for your breakthrough right now? I'm getting ready to pray for you guys. Are you ready? Can you believe now? I have given you, my God, I've given you everything that you need right now to receive your healing. I have given it to you through this word. Amen. And I don't have no notes. My notes is my Bible. That's my, that's, that's the only notes I have is my Bible. I'm not preaching from no notes. I'm preaching from the Bible. And God wants to touch you right where you are. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God, you are mindful of your people. You are so mindful of your people. Now, Lord, I believe that nay nay believe. <laughs> I believe that nay nay believe. <laughs> I believe that John believe. I believe, Father, in the name of Jesus, that Lyra believe. I believe, Father, that Lyra believe. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe, Father, that those that have faith, not only do they believe, but, Father, I believe that they will receive right now. Glory to God. Because now, Lyra, I need to talk to you. Amen. I'm getting ready to come back to Alabama very soon, and I need to talk to you. Glory to God. But, God, what do you want your people to do right now. God said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. Oh, hallelujah. Are you ready to believe? Are you ready to release your faith? Are you ready to receive your breakthrough? Amen. Are you ready? I'm getting ready to pray for you. Father, right now, in the gracious and mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah, I rebuke every sickness, every disease, I rebuke every infirmity, I cancel every argument in the spirit realm concerning their health right now in Jesus' name. Father, I declare and decree divine health and healing. I release it right now in the atmosphere over their lives, over their lives right now in Jesus' name. I release the anointing to lift burdens and destroy yokes right now in Jesus' name. You foul demonic spirit of infirmity, I curse you. I rebuke you and I command you to get off of that person. Get off of that man. Get off of that woman of God. Get off of that man of God now in Jesus' name. For we are children of the Most High God. We've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Jesus was made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree. Sickness and disease is under that curse. We are redeemed from that curse. Father, we receive our healing now in Jesus' name. Thank you for your divine touch. Bless your people, Father. There go the anointing right now. Receive the anointing right now. There it is. There it is. Show, call, show, todom, Receive it now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Someone just got healed of AIDS. Amen. I don't know, is it a man or a woman, but someone just got healed of AIDS. It, it's, it's okay, little Bakai. It's in your blood system. It's in your blood system. And God just healed you of AIDS. Right now, the warmth of God's presence is all over you right now in the name of Jesus. I speak to the blood system. I said, be healed now in Jesus' name. Be healed now in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. That was a strong witness in my spirit. God just touched someone that has AIDS. Amen. Glory to God. Not only he's delivering you from the AIDS, 
but he delivered you from a lifestyle that attracted that AIDS. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Mm. Thank you, Father. Oh, we worship you, Father. We worship you, Father. Father, we give you glory, Lord God. We give you glory. Ah. Colon cancer. Colon cancer. God, I thank you right now that you, that you are driving out that cancer. That colon cancer. You are driving it out of the body right now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for it. I thank you for it. Receive that. If that's you, receive it. Father, I worship you. I give you glory, Lord God. Father, I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you, Lord God. Praise you. Praise you, Lord God. Praise you, Lord God. Someone, you got a, a tumor. A, it's like a big tumor, and it's in your stomach area. It's a tumor in your stomach area. Amen. Glory. A tumor in your stomach area. God is, God is moving it. God is healing you. God is delivering you right now in Jesus' name. A tumor in your stomach area right now. God is healing you right now. He, he, that tumor, go to the doctor. Have it checked out again. I, I'll shout out about Kai. It's gone in Jesus' name. It's gone in Jesus' name. Father, we worship you. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. My God. Somebody, glaucoma, glaucoma, whatever that is. I just heard it. Glaucoma. God, I ask you that you would touch and heal right now. Glaucoma in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I don't know what it is, but God said it, and I'm releasing it right now in Jesus' name. I rebuke it. I rebuke glaucoma, and I command you to go right now in Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I command it to go now in Jesus' name. Glory. Thank you, Father. We worship you. We praise you. We worship you. We praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, that's enough for tonight. Hallelujah. I just, I, I, I enjoy coming to you this time of night because this is the time when I experience the peace of God. Amen. It is so peaceful during this time of the night. And, and, and you know, I don't, I don't, I just, I'm here for those that want to come. I don't, I'm not trying to, I don't try to in, insist on no one coming, but I'm here for those that want to come. Amen. And I want to tell you, you there on live me, you there on live me right now, there's a move of the spirit of God right now that is going to sweep across Shalalabakai, this program, live me. You that are on live me, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. God is going to, there's a, there's a, there's a, that God is breathing across this program right here. Live me. Get ready. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're doing. Amen. But God is about to, uh, that, that's, I see, I see, I see the, the spirit of God is breathing across all of you that are on live me. Amen. I don't, I, I'm just talking about, I'm talking about live me because this is what I'm hearing in my spirit. Amen. You, a lot of you are hurting. You, a lot of you, it's been, it's been, you, you, you thinking that God has forgotten about you, and and you think you caught in a lifestyle that that there's no way out. God said to you today. He said, "My son, my daughter." He said, "I do love you, regardless of what you have heard. I do love you, and I will." If you would allow me to deliver you. This is what God is saying to you. I will, if you would allow me to deliver you. Crochet mm. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, I thank you. I thank you for that in Jesus' name. That's a powerful word for that for, for, for live me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, my time is up. Lyra, need to talk to you. Give me a call. God bless you all. We'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye. Hallelujah.
Are you still up? <laughs> Amen, amen. How's everything going? Everything is way out here. Y- y'all been out of town? Yeah. I saw y'all out there. I didn't. I didn't have. I I didn't want to interfere, interfere with you guys, but I I've followed y'all while y'all was out there. Well, you know, well, we went at different times. I went to Italy uh, a couple of weeks ago in Glarius. Uh, went to Alaska. They just got back from Alaska a couple of days ago. Oh, okay. Uh, they went on an Alaskan cruise during time and I went to Italy for my birthday. And they went to Alaska. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Amen. I would like to go to Alaska myself. I want to go see. I want to see Butterhampton. <laughs> Is he still in Alaska? Yeah. Him and uh, him and uh, what's her name? What's his wife's name? I can't think of his name. Alaska of all places, huh? Yeah, that's where they live at. Yeah. His, his, his wife will have his, his wife will have such a, a, a allergy problem. They've moved there because of that. Really? Yeah. Been there ever since. When they got out of the military, that's where they was. That's where they stayed. Huh. Yeah. How how was this message tonight? Was it was it uh, did you did you get much of it? Oh, like I told you, I just I just turned in when you was uh, uh I just turned in when you was talking about Jesus and uh, uh Yeah. But uh, that was some people that, that was some people that God was ministering to though big time before. Ooh. But uh I, you talking about live live something? What is that? You people that on some kind of I'm on I, I'm 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 broadcasting on six programs right here. Oh, uh, I never heard of that one. I'm on six programs right here. Mm-hmm. And that that particular program right now tonight it was uh 662 people. Really? Follow me on that program tonight. Just tonight. That, that's awesome. Uh, sometime that program get up to 9 Nine hundred over the thousands, over the oh, over, really? over over in the thousand. Yeah. Yep. That is wonderful. Yeah. What else are y'all doing out there in Sacramento? Oh, God is dealing my heart about coming back to Alabama again for for, for another healing crusade, healing conference. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. And what so. Are you I'm trying to figure out when when do he want me to come and, and where do he want me to do it at. Uh, and so I'm trying to figure. I'm we praying. We we praying now. We start. My family. We starting to pray about it now. Mm-hmm. Because I'm trying to get the mind of God. He spoke to my heart and told me it's time. So it's been a couple of years. It's been a couple of years. Yeah. It's been a couple of years. No, uh, what that, uh, Labor, Labor Day was a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's all good. It's going to happen again. Uh, we're going to be in Texas on the, in, uh, what that, January with the World, okay. the World Conference with Dr. Wait, Sir- yeah. And so I was just thinking, because I wanted to come, I will think about coming sometime during that time, but we won't be able to do what we need to do during that same time. Well, that's good. Yeah, I mean, Texas. Well, you going to drive to Texas? No, I'm going to fly. I ain't driving. It's too far. <laughs> I'll go down there and rent me a car. Yeah. Yep. See, when I come to Alabama, we might fly into Birmingham because it's cheaper to go to Birmingham and take a rental car and come on up. Right. It's uh, saved about four, five hundred dollars, mm-hmm. or more or less. Yeah. So we're gonna do what we have to do. Yeah, you're doing it. 
going to do what we have to do. Amen. So how how was how was uh how did you like your vacation? Man, instantly I went from the top to the bottom of Italy. I went to start out in Venice and then we drove to Florence a couple of nights. We drove to Rome for three nights. Then we drove to Toronto for three nights. It was amazing. Really? It was so much stuff to see in Rome. It was I mean all of Italy, but uh, it was just amazing. A lot of a lot of biblical scenes. Oh yeah, you know, uh, I guess not. The, the most thing that stood out to me is that Gladiator Coliseum. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, up inside this thing, it, it's just amazing. And then you saw all the ancient ruins. You see, you saw. I mean, we went to uh, Saint Joseph's uh, Cathedral and wow. saw where he was buried still today. You know, wow. His tomb is still here. We visited the Vatican and went off through the Vatican. Wow. That's awesome. I want to go to Israel, though. You go there every year like, lately, don't you? Yep. I you go to church? No, we go with Dr. Cirillo. We go as a uh, ministry. But I didn't go this oh, year. I'm, you I'm, I'm, you I'm, go there with Dr. Cirillo? Yeah, I'm not going this year, though. Right now, oh. I, I sell I sell a lot of, I get a lot of oil from Jerusalem. I got a lot of anointing oil that I sell now from Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. Whenever I come down there, I'm gonna bring some with me. So when I people that might want to buy some, they be able to get some. So what month do y'all normally go? November. Oh. Yeah, November. Every November. M- m- my wife, she's been with us several times too. I mean, I know you've been over there for a Oh, yeah, I always take a lot of pictures. Yeah. That's what I said. I, I think, like, I, like I said, I know you've been over there. I, I didn't know she had been over there. So, wow. Well, I, I know you were going with Mark Cirilla. Yeah, we go, as, we go as a team. I, I, I baptized like 80 people the last time I was over there in the, mm-hmm. in the Jordan River. That's what I'm going to go do, too, when I go over there. So I'm going to get baptized in that Jordan River. My very first time I went, I got that's what that's when I did it. My very first time, mm-hmm. and then from that point on, I started helping them baptize everybody, all the other people. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, it's a it's a very good good it's a good journey. It's it's yeah, it's a good it's a, a wonderful yeah, experience. A group, of, a group of girls talking about doing it, uh, not not <clears throat> in twenty twenty one. Yeah. Yeah, they're talking about saving the money, but I wanna, I wanna go. If I find there's a, uh, who's about <coughs> uh, what's his, what's his name going, or uh, getting up a crew to go? What's his name? That's a prophetess, prophet, uh, prophetess. Mm. <coughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that, that 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 guy that always talking about the end times and stuff. Oh yeah, he, uh, yeah. He's he, he's getting a crew up to go again. Mhm. How little Miss Elizabeth doing? Oh, that girl growing up. Isn't she though? Oh my God. How old is she now? She be eight January, Miss December the third. Oh man, I didn't realize she was younger than my, but then my youngest granddaughter. I thought she was about the same age. No, as my she... granddaughter. No, she'd be eight January the third. December the third, I mean. December the third. Yep. December the third yes. at six fifteen PM. Oh you you remember the time, huh? I was there. I bet you were there. <laughs> I was there when I was born. I can't tell you the time they were born. <laughs> And I was showing up there. Oh, it was. I, I can tell you the time. Your time was push, <laughs> push. I know. That's what I'm saying. That's the only time I know. I, I don't know what time it was going, but I know I was there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I, when I you come, you got your business, huh? You still got your business. Oh, yep. And it's just, it's, I wish I had someone that wanted to work. I don't know. Can't hard to find nobody want to work around here. 
it's not just there. I got a couple of friends who are going through the same thing with their business. Can't find nobody who want to work. Yeah. I got, I got, I got a lot going on right now, but that's okay. Really? Oh, yes, really. Business-wise? <laughs> Business-wise and, yeah, ministry-wise, everything is just picking up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just, I just bought, I'm just, I'm putting new furniture all the way through my house. New bedroom suit, new living room suit. Next, I'm gonna get a new dinette set. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. I wanted to get done so this house. They hold what's in me. You know, all that stuff is. Well, I, I, we never had, we had never bought, we had never had our, our brand new furniture at all. We always yeah. we always bought stuff from the Craigslist, hand me downs and stuff. Yeah. And so yeah, yeah. I wanted to I wanted us to have our own furniture at least one time in our life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good thing to be able to do that. Oh yeah. It's a good thing to be able to. Yeah. I think it's the thing that I need to do with this house is pull this carpet up and and I think I want to replace it with with. Uh, Wood floor, yeah, that's what my floor is. That's what I need to do. I got me a got me a, a recliner chairs, lazy boy chairs, couches, love seat. Yeah, living high on the hog right now <laughs> because of his goodness and his mercies. What you talking about? That's what I was saying when I was in Italy. I'm like, Lord, nothing but your grace is allowing this little country girl to be able to take a trip. Yeah. By myself. I went by myself. By yourself. Mm-hmm. Hey, what did what did husband you prophesied years ago? Oh, he done came, you done ran them off. <laughs> Three, four times. <laughs> <laughs> No. He, he, never, he never was my husband. Ain't nobody going to put up with a lot of stuff. Hey, man, this is not what I'm saying. Why do you got to send them? No, this stuff is. When I'm talking to people, somebody approached me. That's how I'm preaching. He said, Who you think? Who you? What do you want from me? Get away from me. You don't do that no more, though, do you? <laughs> I see you and your do- you and your daughter, y'all y'all hanging in there tight, huh? Yeah, she's 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 doing good. Yeah, the business is is ticking up too. Who that? She had a hard time trying to find somebody to assist her. She's trying to find someone, but she's in a different state, but they're working out. Yeah, it can happen. Yeah, yeah, she's her virtual assistant. I mean, her, she's need an admin assistant. And she's in, I forgot what she is. She's in another state, don't know. Your daughter's still in Birmingham? She's in Montgomery. Montgomery, I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Oh. Starting to be a doctor. Wow, one lawyer now you getting a doctor, huh? Well, I hope you stay the course. I asked her the day. I said, you stay in the course. She like, what you mean? I said, you still gonna be a doctor? Well, I'm not really sure if I really do. I really want to be a doctor. And now she, when she went to college, the first semester <clears> she came <throat> back. A, a vegan, so she don't stop eating all meat. So now she was talking about she want to start her own uh, produce line, a health food line, or something like that. She's a vegan now. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people going through that right now. She don't eat no meat. She don't even. She 
Well, the, ele- the elephant don't eat no meat. Look how strong the elephant is. <laughs> yeah, you know, you got a lot of animals out there. That, uh... The giraffe don't eat no meat. Look how tall it. Look how strong and tall that thing is. Mm-hmm. They eat leaves off the trees. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They they not they not anemic. <laughs> They not nimics. They not nimics. They strong animals. Uh, yeah, yeah. Some people. I mean, it's healthier that way. Yeah, we just we just went on a thirty day fast. Just 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 uh, veggies on it, veggies and fruits. My, start one and, uh, my wife, about my wife still doing before. it. My wife still doing it. And if and you lose you lose that fat off your body when you do that too. Oh yeah. Yeah. I might I'm gonna have to do it again, especially when I before I come to Alabama to preach the revival. You look thin in the video just now. Well, I am. I've lost some weight because I I just come off a thirty day a thirty day of uh, vegan fast myself. No meats. 30 days. Yeah. I, I, I slim back down, son. Let me do it. Uh, we start the year off every year with one. But uh, like I said, next week we're going to go on. A, we're just going to do seven days. If you do seven days the first of the year and three days once a month, three days every month, at the end of, at the, end of the year you have, you've been fasted 40 days. God gave me that revelation when 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 we were doing that what a UFO last when we did that. Mm-hmm. I said, God, I said, I never would have thought about there would been forty days of fasting. But they but, did forty days straight. <laughs> no, nah, I ain't doing. I, 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 if I do, I could do that, but I'm, I won't. It won't be no. Uh, if you can do thirty days, you can do forty days. Oh, a vegan a vegan fast, I can do more than that. I can yeah. I can do yeah. I can do sixty days. Exactly. Just, just if I can have my veggies and fruits, I can do whatever men I want to do then. But I, but you know how that is. Yeah. You have to be willing to do those things. <laughs> And then once you do it, once you get it started, you gotta be faithful to it. And sometimes, ooh, on that thirty days, it'd be like, okay, now what other kind of meals can I prepare? I go online and get the Daniel Fast recipe book, some kind of stuff out of that, and be making kind of making meals and stuff. Yeah. Sometimes it goes, Lord. It's... Amen. Yep. Be so focused on. But you have to concentrate with that. Like I think they be so fucking trying to find, oh, what are we gonna eat? Instead of spending, instead of spending that time with the Lord and praying. Yeah. Mmm. So it's one o'clock out there. Yeah, it is. I don't know. I'm like, I went. To, I didn't go to bed till one o'clock this time, but I didn't go to sleep. I'm like, why can't I sleep? It is one. It is one twenty-four right now. Yeah, I ain't been like this in a minute. Yeah. So where where what would be a good place to go to to do uh, a healing prayer conference over there? In Decatur, in Hunts, maybe Huntsville. In Huntsville. I don't know that many people in Huntsville. So I'm gonna stick with Decatur. Yeah. Decatur and Hillsborough area. You didn't you didn't like you the hotel you was at right after uh Yeah. You know, now what's the name of that? that's the uh, best what's the name of that hotel? Well it used to be the holiday inn. Now that now they name it the uh, uh what's it called now? Uh I 
forgot. See, I have to look it up. I forgot what they call it now. Yeah, look it up and text it. When you were there, they had changed the name of it. Is it the... The best... The well, double tree or something like that? That's right, the double tree. That's right. Double tree. That's right. Yeah. And and they gave me a good price there, $100 a night. No, that was really good. I know. You can tell I know. Huh. <laughs> That's why I, I want to. That's why I've been thinking about going back to that place, cause I, I'm gonna see where they remember me. Where they give me. It's very accessible to either uh, Decatur or or Huntsville. Yeah, and Hillsburg. And Hillsburg, yeah. So and Athens. Athens. Yeah, Athens. Athens. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Hartsel. Yeah. Yeah. And Athens, and Hartsel, and and Battlemuscle Springs. And Pulaski, you know. Yeah. Me, but... It ain't that far away. So yeah, that's that's what it was. Double tree, I think it was. Yeah. So you say you thinking about coming when? I'm praying about it. I'm, I, I, yeah. we, we, we're praying about it. But we're gonna we're gonna be praying a little bit harder because uh, this year is going away real fast. God kept me on this message all year. What message at that? Uh, restoring to restore the restore the, the the image of God back into the heart of man. I've been preaching the message ever since this summer, uh, 2018. People need to know that though. It's crazy. Yeah, but I've been pre- it's been I've been new de- episodes every Sunday morning though. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I take one one message and I run it for a, a little while and then I. But then I go to another one. But I, I have to keep it uh, restoring the image of God to the heart of man. I'm telling you, preaching this message has really set a new, a fresh, a freshness of God's presence in my in my heart. And that's what I desire. That's what I'm in desperate need of a refreshing. Yeah. That's what that's that. I believe that's why God wanted me to come back to Alabama to bring a spirit of refreshment to the body of Christ that would that that is hungry. Because there are some people that still like my ministry down there. Matter of fact, I've been, there have been quite a few of them watching on my watching online lately from Alabama. Hillsburg and Cater and Huntsville too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all around there. You playing the piano or something? No, I'm listening to my music that you always hear when I'm preaching. Mm-hmm. This instrumental music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, on YouTube. On um, YouTube. Yeah. When I, when what? I'm whenever I'm preaching, I got music playing. Oh it, yeah. Is that it, it help me to help me to? It, to it helps you flow, yep. Yeah. It helps me to flow in the spirit. It does, yep. Yeah. It helps you to flow. So, how old were you when you started preaching? Uh, I was 20, 25, or 26. You was in your 20s. I was in my, I think I was 30. When I come home out of military, I started preaching in 86. In 86? 1980, 1986, yeah, 1986, because four years after I started preaching, God sent me to Bible school, because my first two years, I sure wish I had gone somewhere, yeah, they got, you know, they got, the one in Huntsville is, is better than it was years ago, and they more, when I was when I first started preaching, I don't know. I think they still had an issue with women, but they they kind of coming around. Yeah. Now now they got a PhD degree over here. They say. Wow, I had I had sixty four people with me on Periscope. Oh yeah. Yeah, tonight they they starting to pick up on that now. That's good. Uh, they. The, the women preacher, they start, they, 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 start, they starting to fit in real good now. 
Me and starting to fit in real good. Uh, nobody messing with him that much no more. Unless they, got, unless I, they, I, unless they get a hold to some religious band. <laughs> I got a, a a friend who's still really troubled about that though. Really? Mm-hmm. That may be your husband. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's a female. And oh, she, she, oh. And her her husband was a pastor, and she and she's a and but he passed, but she then she started pastoring the church, but um, for some reason now she's. Step. She's dealing with the uh, issue of uh, do God um, can a woman be a pastor or an apostle or or um, you know in leadership basically. Tell her to ask some of the women that's in leadership. That's what? like she like uh, like, George Myers, like George Miles, like George Miles. Right. <laughs> Stop I remember, I remember years ago. Remember years ago, it was, I think it was like nineteen. It wasn't nine. It may have been two thousand. I called you and I said, "Larry, can a woman be an apostle?" You said, "No woman can be an apostle." I said that. You sure did. It. And I asked you. You never knew why I asked you. It's because it was like in. in I started preaching in ninety eight. And it was like it was fast, and God told me that um, I was an apostle, and I was like, "No, Lord, a woman can't be an apostle." <laughs> and, um, I know that's what I said, and and I'm sure He lies too. And then I called you, and I asked you, and when you said no, I said that's the end of that. I didn't mention it for years, and it was like in 2001, I think. Okay. Well, I say years, so so it was a couple of years. I, I didn't know. I, I, I didn't know a lot back then myself. Well, apparently, and we all don't know everything, but but that's what you said. No woman can be an apostle. Like like that tone you said I use. That's yeah. that daddy tone, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Lord help us. Yeah, but we overcome. We overcome. We are, us now. What you talking about? What you talking about? We learn better, we do better. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. And God is showing himself strong. You talk to S lately? Well, she used to call me all the time. But no, I haven't heard from her lately. Oh, I talked to her a couple weeks ago. I called Ruben and they was together. You called Ruben? Yeah. And she was with us. He was with us. Yeah, they they was going to the Sam Club over in over in Madison. Oh Lord Jesus! Not the third time. Why is she always going back to that man? Well, uh, probably because I can't get no. Ah <laughs> uh, yeah, Lord help. Me. What happened to his wife? I have no idea. Yeah, I have no idea. Wow. I got you know, I don't even know. Well, if she was hanging out with him, he must be divorced. But I think he is. Cause I can remember a couple of years ago that all the kids went to his house for uh, his birthday or her birthday or something a few years ago. Really? Mm. Well, that's all right. If that's what they want to do, let them do what they want to do. I ain't, I ain't got to live with them. <laughs> yes, they gonna do what they want to do. I don't have to live with them. I don't even have to live around them. <laughs> that, that was my thought. I don't even have to be around. They can do what they want to do. They grown people. Cause I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. What I, I'm gonna do. I, I'm gonna do what I have to do. Mm-hmm. I have to continue 
lot of people thought I was not going to last this long. But look, here it is, and I'm still going. I'm still going. Still going. You got 600 followers on just one one site, so. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Yep. I just don't like to be in front of the camera. I had two prophets, uh, it's been a couple of years ago now, and was telling me, you're going to be, either, I see you on all all kind of social media. You know, you're on this one and you're on that one, and I'm thinking, that is not me. Mm-hmm. But I guess that's the way a lot of people go in these days. Well, I'm the first one to start this mess. It's not mess. Because nobody was doing it when I was doing it. When you were there, Uh, That was 2007. 2007? Yep. Nobody was... They was on TV, but nobody was doing uh, media ministry like I'm like, like this. I was the only one doing it. And uh, when they saw me doing it, they said that's a new thing around, and everybody started jumping on. And because they had a whole, and because they had a whole lot of money, they could make theirs look real good and fancy, get draw people to them. Yeah, but anyway, it's all right. I'm still, I'm still, I'm still up and going. Yeah, 